Hello, Baron here uh, with another video for the board game shelf, and here I'm showing off Sushi Go Party. It's actually kind of funny that I'm showing that I'm talking about this before Sushi Go because we do have Sushi Go. Um, we've had this a bit longer. Here is Sushi Go in a in a metal tin. Um, we actually got it secondhand. Um, the tin is. Uh, the box, it's the metal box itself is all bent out of shape, and but all the all the pieces inside are are good to go. Like everything's fine, everything's in there, and everything's fine. It's just the box looks quite bad. Um, this is like the this is like a much more travel uh, travel side version. I will have an, a video like talking about this uh, sushi go specifically um, because I <clears throat> basically I'm gonna have a video for all each of like. Every like single like smaller game that's like this size that we have in the little like cabinets or whatever. But uh, I just want. But uh, I'm talking about Sushi Go Party first because uh, number one, I, I enjoy Sushi Go Party more than Sushi Go um, for reasons I'll mention. I'll talk about. Um, and also, um, this is this is just bigger. This is not really going to go with like the in the little boxes or cabinets with the smaller games and and, and decks of cards. This is kind of gonna. This is gonna kind of go on the. This is a more recent. This is a more recent uh, purchase, and uh, I wanted to make sure that I covered this before forgetting about it. Uh, but yeah, so this is basically Sushi Go, but bigger. Uh, if you don't know what Sushi Go is, I will tell you. Essentially, um, so first of all, I just gotta say, uh, my wife and I love the cute artwork. Uh, my wife is a huge fan of uh, Japanese food, language, um, culture. She wants to go to Japan. We might go to Japan sometime in a few years or something, but. Uh, but yeah, obviously this is a reference to various, um, you know, foods at a Japanese sushi bar. <clears throat> and uh, so yeah, so in, in Sushi Go, all you, all you really need technically are like are cards. Um, this is basically just a board to kind of keep track of your points where you kind of start in the, in the corner and you go around. Uh, there, there are lots of games that have a point track. That's, that's basically all this is. Uh, but in the middle, you basically set your menu. Uh, there are these little uh, cardboard cards here, if I can grab one of them. Uh, you tell this is a new game, they're not quite pried apart yet. Here we go. So you have, you have, you have, these, uh, you have these cards that fit nicely in here, and you basically set your menu um, here. Because you don't play with all of these cards in one game. You're essentially choosing, a, choosing a, your sushi menu and uh, playing with those. Uh, in fact, in the instructions here, they have a bunch of uh, suggestions. You can make your own uh, combinations, but they have suggestions for like, you know, your first time playing, if you want like the classic experience from Sushi Go, if you want a sampler of what's new in Sushi Go Party, um, kind of like more of uh, something for more experienced players, if you want to score a lot of points, like, like if like score big points, um, there's combos, um, works well with, lar with a larger group of players, works well with two players and you can make your own menu and there's guidelines for that. Essentially, every single menu is going to have uh, nigiri. I'll explain each of the cards in a moment. Uh, each menu is going to have nigiri. It's going to have a type of roll. It's going to have two specials, three appetizers, and a type of dessert. Very simple. You just kind of choose from the very... And I, I have them sorted here going to rolls, appetizers, desserts, and specials. And all the, all the uh, nigiri are here in the front. Um, I also love the fact that half of this instruction booklet essentially um, describes each of the cards and what they do. Um, I will, um, once you, although once you learn the cards, they're very self-explanatory. Basically, this is a play and pass game. Um, everyone's going to get a handful of cards and they choose a, they choose a card, play it in front of them, and pass those cards on to somebody else. And then everyone flips their card over and they score points. And you take the you take the the card that your neighbor passed to you. You choose a card, play it, and then pass it on. And you keep doing that until most until the until the cards are all played. And then you all like see who has the most points at the end, essentially. Um, and yeah, you have these little little pawns that you can use to kind of walk around the board and everything. I arranged them in a nice kind of rainbow order. So yeah, so how do the cards work? So first of all, nigiri are very simple. Um, when you play a nigiri in front of you, they score the amount of points that are down here. So egg nigiris are one point, salmon nigiris are two points, and squid nigiris are three points. Um, very, very, uh, very simple. Just like kind of the bread and butter, if you will, of a sushi bar, I guess. I actually, okay, I should say, I personally am not a fan of seafood in general. So I've never really eaten, I've never really had sushi. I've never really like, liked or tried sushi, I will admit. Uh, I've tried, um, so like raw fish, I'm just not a huge fan of it. 
so it's it's kind of funny because I would not eat most of the food that is represented here. But I mean, I think this is I think this is a really cute game and I really really enjoy playing this. So anyway, there you go. So specials. These are cards that that do a bunch of like wonky things essentially. Uh, the takeout box lets you um, let you flip. Uh, uh, when you play a uh, takeout box, you basically get to flip over any card that you had played, and they are now worth um, two points instead of the points they normally would be, which can be good or bad. Um, <clears throat> actually, no, you can flip. I, I think you can flip anyone's flip, uh, played cards. So anyway, I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, chopsticks, what happens is you uh, you play chopsticks, and then later, if you want two cards in your hand, you can put the chopstick, you can play those two cards and put the chopsticks back in the hand. So you're basically using these to kind of like, you know, grab it and extra helping, essentially. I love how thema thematic these are. I'm a huge fan of games that uh, really lean into their theme and use and uh, have have the mechanics of, of the game fit the theme, or the theme fit the mechanics. Um, really good. It just all comes together. Uh, for the spoon, you can ask for any card. Like, say, I want an egg nigiri. And the first person who has an egg nigiri in their hand, they give it to you. Uh, for the menu, you get to you play it and you get to draw four cards and play one and return the rest. Um, the T is one point for each card in your biggest set. So there will be times when you have, like, you know, multiple cards in a set that have, like, matching colors and stuff. So in this case, the T... If this is if this is your largest set of cards in the same color, then this one T card is worth three points. If you have two T cards, then it would be worth six points, three and three, right? So there's I think already you can probably see there's some interesting combo potential here. Uh, special order: it copies any card you've played. Soy sauce: um, if you have the most colors. Um, just in front of you, most uh, colors referring to like the, the main background of each card, you get four points. Uh, wasabi is a lot of fun because basically when you play a wasabi, then the next nigiri you play, it doesn't have to be on your next, it doesn't have to be the next card you play, but just the next nigiri you play, it scores tripled. So that would mean it would be uh, egg nigiri with wasabi would be three points, or a salmon nigiri six points, or squid nigiri nine points, which is really cool. So those are all of the special cards. Uh, dessert cards are fun because basically you score them, you generally score them at the end of a round. Uh, you don't score them immediately. Um, so for pudding, if you're the one with the most pudding, you get six points. But if you're the one with the least points, you get minus six points. Basically, once you understand the card, you can just look at the card and it, it explains itself, essentially. Um, so yeah, you lose six points if you have the least amount of pudding. Um, this is green tea ice cream. Um, four green tea ice creams are worth... 12 points. If you have five of them, too bad. It's still only worth 12 points. If you have eight of them, then that's 24 points, right? So just every four is 12 points. Uh, now we have fruit. So each fruit card has different um, types of fruit on it, right? So you count the number of fruit types you have total. Like if you look at all the cards, all the fruit cards you have and count the number of fruit types you have. In this case, with, with these cards, I would have two types. So if you have one type of fruit, it's minus two points. If you have two types, it's zero points. If you have three types of food, uh, fruit, it's one point, then three, then six, and ten. Um, and so there's like various different types of fruits scattered throughout. Um, oh, wait, no, 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 sorry, I was wrong. It's how many of each type. Okay, so for example, if I have this, if I have these three here, then that means I have four watermelons, so one, two, three, four. The water, I get three points. And for the pineapples, I have two. That's zero points. That's what it is. You, you count the number that you have of each type of fruit. Sorry. Um, if, if you can't, I'm, I'm mostly used to the uh, green tea ice cream. I haven't played with the fruit that much. Appetizers. So, yeah. Um, onigiri. There's different kinds of onigiri. You count the number of unique types of onigiri you have in front of you. And however many types you have is how many points you have. You get one, four, nine, or 16. Miso soup. You can play it. It's worth three points, but if someone else plays miso soup the same turn you do, then you have you all have to discard your miso soup. So you, you need to be the only one to play miso soup on any particular uh, like you know play essentially um, at, a, at at the same time. Edamame it is one point per opponent with edamame. So uh, that's uh, that's kind of really interesting. Um, if you want to sort of like if the edamame spread around, then that's a lot of points for everybody. Tempura, uh, two tempura is worth five points. So again, three tempura is not, is just worth five points, but four tempura is worth ten. So pretty straightforward there. 
Appetizers tend to be pretty straightforward. Sashimi, three of them are worth 10 points. Um, tofu, if you have one tofu, it's two points. If you have two of them, it's worth six. If you have three or more, it's worth zero. It's this idea of like, tofu is good, but if you have too much tofu, then if you have if you get too much tofu, then it starts not tasting great or something. Like, I think that's the idea. Like, they really try to think of like, how it is, what it's like to eat that food. Um, for example, eel. If you have one eel in front of you, it's minus three points. But if you have two or more eels, it's seven points. I think that's to reflect the fact that eel is a bit more of an acquired taste. You might not like the first time you eat it, but if you eat it, if you eat it a second time or third time, then it's better. So again, if you have two or more eels in front of you, you get seven points. And finally, dumplings. For each dumpling you have, uh, you get a certain number of points. So if you have one dumpling, you get one point. If you have two dumplings, you get three points, six, 10, and 15. And then finally, we have the different kinds of rolls. You're gonna only have one kind of roll per game, basically. So we have Maki. So each Maki roll card is going to have one, two, or three rolls on them. So at the end of the, at the end of a game when all the cards have been played, you count how many like roll Maki roll symbols you have, and whoever has the most gets um, well in a two to five player game. Whoever has the most has, gets six points. Whoever has the second most gets three points. But you have to have Maki rolls in front of you to have to count. And then there's different scoring for six to eight players, uh, six, four, and two. Uh, next, we have the Tamaki rolls. Whoever has the most uh, gets four points. Uh, whoever has the most Tamaki rolls gets four points. Whoever has the least gets minus four points. And then finally, we have Uramaki. Um, there is a lot of Uramaki on these various cards. Whoever is the first to get 10 Uramaki symbols gets eight points. The second person to get 10 Uramaki symbols, five points. The third one, two points. Um, but yeah, and you basically choose a combination of one type of roll, two types of specials, three types of appetizers, and one type of dessert. And that is your uh, your menu, essentially, that you have to work with. And you pass and play the cards, and it's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, so I like Sushi Go Party more than Sushi Go because I love the variety. Um, it feels a lot more like an actual sushi bar to me. Again, I haven't, like, been to a lot of sushi bars. Well, I've never eaten that one before, but I've seen them, and I've seen how they work. There is very much a sort of, like, pick what you want kind of a thing, right? You you, you sort of, like, check the boxes on which one you want. And this this feels a lot more like that kind of experience than Sushi Go does. Because in Sushi Go, you just play with all the cards in the deck. And um, a lot of the more basic cards that are in this game are in Sushi Go. But uh, this just feels more like an actual, like, you know, sushi bar. And there's just, there's just more cute cards. And you can play with more people. And it's a party. So, um, yeah. Uh, I am glad that we have both versions. But in my opinion, this is the superior one. And it does work for even, like, two players. It works for eight players. Anything in between. It's fantastic. You can customize your experience. Just like at a sushi bar place. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time. All the best.